How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be looking at how we can create this graph in SwiftUI and as you can see it is color coded and it has the days and also a special feature for this graph is if you tap on an item it's going to give you the value of the item and decrease the opacity of the item so the user can see that they've selected on it. So it's a very simple graph we can create in SwiftUI and we can refresh this if we want new values and refresh it again. If it goes over a certain amount, it's going to turn red. If it's nice and low, it's going to stay green. Otherwise, in the middle, it's going to be yellow. And I'm going to be showing you how to create all of this in vanilla Swift UI. So to get started, let's go ahead and open a new Xcode project. And the very first thing we need to do is create a struct, which we're going to call bar. And that's going to conform to the identifiable protocol. Now we're going to go ahead and create an ID, which is just going to be a UUID. Otherwise, let's go ahead and create a name, which is going to be of type string, a var of day, so we can tell what day it is, of type string, var of the value of the bar, so we also want to be able to decide how big it is, so that's going to be a double, and the color of the bar that we have created. So those are going to be the set properties for this struct. But I also want to go ahead and create a sample item for this struct so we can easily use it. And this is going to be a static var, so it's available everywhere. And it's going to be called sample bars. And inside here, we're just going to create an array of bar. And this is going to be a computed property. So inside here, we can just insert some simple code to create the sample bars, such as var temp bars is going to equal an array of bar. And this is empty at the moment. Then we have to go ahead and create a variable of caller, which is going to be of type caller, and we're going to set that to green initially. Then we're going to go ahead and let the days equal a set list of days. So we have Monday, of course, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm really bad at typing, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So those are the seven days of the week and you can change that to your own language if you want. But we're going to be using the English version for this example. Now let's go ahead and create some sample data. So for i in the range of one to seven, those are seven days and seven is inclusive. So we're going to first get started by creating a random value, which is going to be a double dot random in the range of 20 to 200. Now, if the random is more than 150, then we're going to go ahead and return or assign to the caller the caller of dot red. Else, if random is more than 75, we're going to go ahead and assign to the caller the value of dot yellow. Else, it's just going to be dot green because it's a very low value. So caller is going to equal dot green. Now, still inside the for loop, we need to go ahead and create a bar. So let the bar equal a bar with the name, and we actually have to fill out all of these values. So the name is just going to be some interpolation with an I, so it just can be the number. The day is going to be set to the days at the index of I minus one, because here we're going from one to seven, and this actually starts from zero to six. So we need to make sure we stay into that array by subtracting one from the initial value. And the value is going to be set to the random with the caller being set to the caller. Then we can go ahead and type in temp bars dot append. And we will append the bar that we've just created. And then we can go ahead and return temp bars. And this whole variable here, this whole computed variable, is going to be our sample data. It created seven different bars that we can insert into a list and then display it to the user. But after you've created this struct of bar, we can go ahead and go inside our content view and get started immediately by creating some at state variables. So at state private var bars is going to equal the sample data we've just created, which are the sample bars. Then at state private var selected ID is going to be of type UUID, and that's going to equal a UUID initially. Then we can go ahead and type in at state private 
var of text, and that's going to equal info. So selected ID is just there to help Swift understand which item we selected on. And every time we tap on an item, it's going to give us the UUID and it's going to make the opacity a bit less. And the text is going to be used to display the value to the user. So inside the body, we're going to go ahead and create a V stack with the first thing being the text of text, which will be bold and will have a padding. Then at the bottom, we're going to add a spacer so that everything's going to be pushed to the top. And now we can go ahead and get started with creating the bars. So H stack and the alignment is going to be set to dot bottom. So all of the bars are going to be drawn to the bottom of the screen. Then we need to go ahead and create a for each loop and we're going to iterate over the bars. So for each bar inside this list, we're going to do the following. So the first thing we have to do is create a Z stack and inside here, we're going to create a rectangle and the foreground caller is going to be set to the bar.caller. So as you can see, we already have some interesting effects on our screen. It created seven bars with seven different colors, but of course we want to kind of edit those to look like bars. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and give them a frame with a width of 35 and a height of bar.value and the alignment is going to be set to dot bottom. So it's already looking much, much better. We can see that the tall bars are red, the small bars are green, and the medium bars are yellow. But we also want to show the user that they have some values associated with them. And we want to make it look a bit nicer. So what we're going to do is go ahead and give it a corner radius of six. And we also want to go ahead and change the opacity depending on whether the user has selected an item. So here we need to refer to our selected ID. And if that is equal to the bar.id, then we're going to go ahead and return 0.5 to reduce the opacity by half. Otherwise, the rest of them are going to be set to 1.0. So the one we're currently selecting is going to be slightly less opaque. Now, we also want to create an on tap gesture just to make sure that that functions correctly. So self.selectedID is going to equal the bar ID that we tap on and the self dot text is going to equal the value of the integer of the bar dot value. Because if we just return the bar dot value as a double, it's going to be a very long number. And we want to make sure that it's a simple number. Next, since we are in a Z stack, we can go ahead and insert a text, which is going to be the integer value of the bar dot value. And we need to go ahead and give this a foreground color of dot white. So now you can see the numbers inside the graph, which is great, it looks great, but we still have a few more things we want to add, such as below each one of these bars, we want to go ahead and add a text of each day. So we're going to type in bar.day. And it kind of looks weird at the moment, and that's because I forgot to add a V stack, which should have the Z stack inside it. And then it should function correctly. Now at the bottom of the H stack, we want to go ahead and give this whole thing a frame. And what we're interested in is giving it a height. So go to the height box and give it a height of 240. And the alignment is also going to be set to dot bottom. So this is going to create a box and it's going to put it inside the box. And we also want to go ahead and give it a padding of 20 and a background of dot thin material. So as you can see, now we have a box here. And the reason we added a frame is because if we did not have the frame, every time it refreshes, the bars might be a bit higher and it's going to stretch the box and it's going to give us undesired behavior. So we want to predefine a box just the same way as you would predefine some space when you're trying to load an image from an online URL. You want to just reserve some space so it doesn't give you unexpected dimensions later. And the corner radius will be set to six for this example. So now we have a working graph and the last feature I want to add is a refresh button, which will just give us new values each time we tap on a button. And it's going to give us new values each time we start the app, but it's also good for debugging purposes if we have a button that will show us how it's going to react to new values. So right above the spacer, we're going to go ahead and create a button that says refresh with a closure that comes with an animation. And this animation is just going to assign self.bars 
with some more sample data. So bar dot sample data. And we need to give this button some padding. So just like that, we can go ahead and run this application. And as soon as the application runs, you're going to notice a very simple bar graph with the numbers inside, the days at the bottom. And if you tap on refresh, it's going to give us some new data. And each time it gives us that new data, it's going to form it in the graph automatically for us. So we can do that as many times as we like. But that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.